A standard resource economics approach to the question of the value of water goes back to things like the Dublin Statement of 1992, which says, and I quote, water has an economic value in all of its uses, and this value must be understood and, and recuperated um, within any water supply, water delivery system. That's understood as economic value, and that leads quite neatly and directly towards uh, an understanding of water as an economic commodity. In other words, as an economic commodity, you should get exactly as much as you can pay for, and you should pay for every bit you use. The obvious difficulty with that argument is that water is, a certain amount of water consumption is non-negotiable. The World Health Organization tends to suggest that we need 25 or 50 liters per person per day of clean water available simply to stay alive and stay healthy. To actually develop and grow as, as humans, as citizens, uh, requires more than that. And so the standard is set fairly high in terms of what's needed to be prosperous, happy, successful individuals. At the same time, as there's a, a general direction of travel in water resources management, that wants to see, if not water, then certainly water services, privatized. That is to say, the availability of finance becomes the gatekeeper and the arbiter of how much, of what kind of water you will have. So in answer to the question, is water a resource that is currently undervalued, I would have to say we need to reframe the question. The value of water doesn't lie, ultimately, in its economic value, in the same way that the value of a packet of Pringles certainly lies in its market value. Nobody's life depends on Pringles. I think we can be fairly comfortable with that. Water's value ultimately lies in the fact that it is fundamental to life, social, cultural, and economic development. The challenge, however, is to translate the idea that water is a, is a right, is, a, is an innate right of every human citizen, into a service delivery mechanism. Service delivery mechanisms currently are generally dominated by private undertakers who operate in a for-profit environment, albeit regulated, and there isn't much room for a non-commodity provision of water. Unless one begins to look at instances like South Africa, where the South African constitution guarantees a certain standard of water provision to every South African citizen. Of course, as, as many viewers will know, this right has been challenged recently by the city of Johannesburg in a famous court case that went all the way to the South African um, Supreme Court, which set, which attempted to pin down or define just how much provision was enough provision. Was it one liter per person per day or a hundred liters per person per day? And in fact, the South African uh, Supreme Court decided that somewhere around 25 liters per person per day was adequate in the circumstances of current infrastructure development and availability of finance uh, in South Africa.